Hey, welcome to another lesson on Make Science Easy. We're doing some more biology today. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at osmosis and active transport. Now, I'm going to assume that you know about diffusion before you take this lesson. If not, I'm going to explain a few of the basics, but I do suggest you catch up on the lessons about diffusion before you move on to this. So, what is osmosis? Well, osmosis is a form of diffusion. So if you don't know what diffusion is, it is essentially the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Now this occurs across a concentration gradient, so high to low concentration. The movement of each particle is random, but overall the majority of particles will move from a high to a low concentration until the concentrations are even. When concentrations are even, diffusion stops. Well, osmosis is a type of diffusion that refers only to the diffusion of water. And osmosis always happens through a partially permeable membrane. Now, in practice, this generally means a cell membrane, but not always. So a partially permeable membrane will allow some substances to pass through. These are generally small substances, for example, water but will prevent large substances from passing through, for example, sugars or starches. Water always diffuses from an area of high concentration to one of low concentration. So if we look at the picture here, we can see the water is moving from the right to the left through the partially permeable membrane. The molecules that are red, which are sugar molecules, cannot pass back the other way, so these sugar molecules cannot pass from high to low concentration across this membrane because they will not pass through it. So, solutions can contain salts or other substances dissolved in water. So pure water is going to look like this. We have only water molecules in here, nothing else is in here. Now this is pretty rare and you're only ever going to get it if you have distilled water because tap water will contain dissolved salts as well. We can have dilute solutions. Now dilute solutions contain low levels of salt, but high concentrations of water. Finally, we can have concentrated solutions. So concentrated solutions contain high levels of salt or sugar, or whatever else is dissolved in it, but lower concentrations of water. If these three cells were put next to each other, the water would diffuse by osmosis from a high concentration of water to a low concentration of water. Now let's look at a practical example of this. Let's look at a cell. Cells need to keep what we call an isotonic balance of water. This means that there isn't water going in or water going out, that generally the amount of water in a cell stays constant. So if we look here at this example, we can see that we have two solutions of water, water inside the cell and water outside of the cell. Each of these solutions also has dissolved minerals in them. And we can see that there's roughly the same amount of dissolved minerals inside and outside of the cell. Water concentration is equal inside and outside of the cell. This means that no osmosis or no diffusion is going to take place because osmosis and diffusion only move substances from a high to a low concentration. Now water may move into the cell, but it will also move out at the same time. So there's going to be no overall movement. There'll be no net diffusion taking place. But if we change the concentration of sugar or salt, or whatever mineral this is, and we increase it so there is more outside of the cell, we now have a high concentration of water inside the cell and a low concentration of water outside of the cell. So think for yourself, what is going to happen here? Diffusion is always the movement from a high concentration to a low concentration. If I have more water inside of my cell than outside of my cell, the water is going to diffuse out. It's going to diffuse out by osmosis. The mineral particles are not going to diffuse because in this example, we're going to assume they cannot cross the membrane. If we put plant cells in pure water or a very dilute solution, we find that water is going to move into the cell. 
The reason for this is that the water is more concentrated outside of the cell than inside of the cell. So water moves in or diffuses in by osmosis. The cell becomes turgid. What this means, it means it's become completely filled with water and there is lots of pressure on the cell wall. If we put plant cells in an isotonic solution, water moves both in and out of the cell. And the reason for this is that the concentration of water is the same inside and out of the cell. So although diffusion takes place and water moves in and out, there is no net osmosis or no overall osmosis because the amount of water moving in is the same as the amount of water moving out. The cell remains flaccid. This means that the vacuole is not completely full with water, that the cytoplasm is not pushing particularly hard against the cell wall, so the cell is in its normal state. The final thing that we can do is we can put plant cells in a concentrated solution. Now, in a concentrated solution, there is more water inside of our cell than outside of our cell. So water will move out. And water is obviously again going to move out by os osmosis. So when this happens, the cytoplasm detaches from the cell wall because there's now no longer any water inside pushing the cytoplasm against the cell wall, the vacuole becomes fairly empty, and we call this process plasmolysis. The cell becomes plasmalized. If you want to learn more about this, we do have a video where you can perform an experiment on potatoes to see how this process works. It's a really simple experiment, and it's a really good experiment to try at home to see how osmosis works. What happens if we do this in an animal cell? Will the results be the same as a plant cell? So if we put an animal cell in pure water, water is again going to move in by osmosis because the water is more concentrated outside of the cell than inside of the cell. But this time the cell is going to burst and this process is called lysis. And the reason why the cell bursts is because there is no cell wall helping to keep the cell together. Plant cells will survive in a pure solution. They'll become turgid. Animal cells will not. Pure water is very, very bad for animal cells. Lysis will occur. If you put animal cells in an isotonic solution, just like with plant cells, water moves in, water moves out because the concentration is the same inside and outside of the cell. There is no net osmosis, so there is no change to our cells. They stay the same. You are always looking in your body to keep an isotonic condition. You want the solution of your blood, the solution of the plasma in your blood, to be the same as your cells. That way, they're not going to have lysis, and they're also not going to have what we see in our next condition, which is when we put animal cells in a concentrated solution. In this case, there's more water inside of the cell than outside of the cell, because water is more concentrated inside of our cell. So water moves out by osmosis. Cells begin to shrink because they no longer have water pressure inside of them. And this is called crenation. This as well is fairly harmful for our cells. Active transport is another way that substances can be moved across a membrane. In diffusion and osmosis, substances always move along their concentration gradient. So from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, as we can see here. Now, when equilibrium is reached, this means we have the same amount on each side of the membrane. Diffusion will always stop. Now, particles will still be moving to each side of the membrane, but overall, there'll be no net diffusion because we will not going to increase the amount of water or whatever substance it is on one side of the membrane. Active transport can move substances against the diffusion gradient. Now, what this means is we can move things in equilibrium and we can create a high concentration gradient, or we can even move things from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. So this is obviously very, very different to diffusion. The problem with this is that active transport requires energy. If we look at an example of how active transport works, we need to look at the cell membrane. 
So in this particular example, we have a high concentration of a substance inside of our cell and a low concentration of our substance outside of our cell. Now what this is going to tell us is the concentration gradient is high inside and low outside. And we already know that diffusion and osmosis always move substances from high concentrations to low concentrations. This means the substance that our cell needs is going to actually diffuse out of the cell. This is not what we want in this particular example. So the cell has to use another method. On this membrane, we can see there are carrier molecules. These do exactly what the name suggests. They physically carry substances across the membrane. So a particle will move and it will come into contact with the carrier molecule. The carrier molecule then effectively opens up. Our particle is pulled down into the cell and energy is required for this to happen because you need energy to move things against the concentration gradient. The carrier molecule will then force the particle down into the cell and active transport has taken place. Energy has been used to move a particle against the concentration gradient. And this is the only way that you can ever move substances against the concentration gradient within a cell. So if a cell needs more and more of a substance, it has to use active transport and it needs to use energy in order to do this. Without energy, active transport cannot occur. So in summary, osmosis is the diffusion of water particles. Osmosis moves water from a high concentration of water to areas with a lower concentration of water. Cells are healthiest in isotonic conditions because water moves in and out at the same rate. Too much water moving into a cell and too much water moving out of a cell can cause undesirable conditions. Active transport moves substances against their concentration gradient, but it uses a carrier molecule which requires energy to work. I hope you've understood the key points here. I hope I've made science easy for you. Until next lesson, keep on learning.